for information, I'm holding up a mind map for myself to refer to because I cannot memorize to save my life. All right, here we go. Friends, this is the final episode for our series. How cool is that? We've come a long way. Can you imagine eight weeks ago, I was talking about the first constant. It is exciting and it is very necessary. Transformation and newness helps us to discover deeper of who God is, who I am, and how I can respond to God's invitation with freedom. Responding from a place of freedom. So there is this truth that we have learned in SOM. In Isaiah 55, it says, My ways are not your ways, my thoughts are not your thoughts. So how we usually read it is, my ways are not your ways, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Like, God wants A, you want B. He wants you to take A, He doesn't want you to take B. Because B is useless, God wants to take A. Right? But no. It says that this is how we see ourselves. This is how we can, this is how we respond. This is how much we think we can respond, even. But when God invites us to respond, when we move out, we become freer. In recognizing what's holding us back, we're able to cooperate with God to be free of these shackles. And the more we respond, the more we're free. My ways are not your ways, my thoughts are not your thoughts. And you go bigger and bigger and bigger. This is our dance in SOM. So naturally, in any kind of transformation and newness journey, we will face obstacles. I face a lot of obstacles, mainly three. One is I was trying to overcome stage fright. During our outreach phase, I was invited to share my testimony. And when I knew that I was going to share my testimony, I was freaking out because I was so fixated in my life that I am, my mind is not organized. I am a nervous wreck. Uh, I sweat or my mouth gets dry or I am not a good teacher. I cannot speak to people. I cannot speak to a large amount of people. Uh, so that was one of the obstacles that was holding me back from experiencing God's transformative love and newness. Second obstacle is lifestyle changes, mainly time and language. So in previous video, I share with you that we have a structure time of course every day looks different but we still have a structure and everything in that day is carefully and intentionally planned out it is for the purpose of our growth I say I struggle with this because when I was at home I did not see planning your day that way that whatever that's in your day is for purpose of something good Usually, I go through the day like a hateless chicken and just go with the flow. That's how I usually roll. But I learned how to be intentional with what, with how I want to spend my time and what I want to do during that time. The second lifestyle change, language. What do you mean? What do I mean by that? So there is a language of a free person. Um, and the opposite is a language of a slave. Let me demonstrate something to you. Language of a slave. I have to do this. I have to do this. Okay? A, lang a language of a free person. I want to do this. Do you see the difference? If I have a slave mentality, I would naturally think that I have no choice in what I want to do with my day. But if I have a free person's mentality, then I know that I can reject what is not life-giving. Last but not least, I struggle a lot with accepting my past. I always see my past as something that should be just hide away and no one needs to know about it. I don't even need to know about it. I don't even need to look at it um, because, well, I already address everything that needs to be addressed. I was wrong. 
me rejecting my past has resulted in me being guarded. Because I was so guarded, I was not able to relate to people. And my guardedness has done more hurt than help. Last but not least, it had my guardedness had made me to think that I'm not or never good enough. So to overcome these obstacles takes a lot of work. So during that day itself where I was freaking out about giving a testimony, I allowed myself to be helped and guided by our leader, Derek. We had a 10 minute dreadful, at that time, dreadful mind mapping session on how to give a testimony. But it helped. It assured me that I am so capable <laughs> of organizing my thoughts. I'm capable of talking to people. I'm a capable of teaching people. And I really enjoy doing that. And I'm capable of being confident. That is one of the examples where as I respond, I become more free. Um, as for the other obstacles, it took me the entire duration of SOM to unlearn these lies. And I use storytelling to help me overcome these obstacles that I encountered during my transformation journey. I became, I was a co-master of ceremony at one of the outreach slash fun night. Um, I gave my testimony. I co-teach with um, my brothers and sisters at SOM. I led multiples of worship. I told my story through a dance. I won't be doing one though. <laughs> so SOM has helped me to recognize that God is a great God. He calls me out of mediocrity and into greatness. So every time I reminded of the lies in my life, I remember this motion. In a nutshell, God calls. He calls you and me. He calls you and me into a journey of transformation and newness. So the choice is either we stay or we move. That's entirely up to you. And that's it for me for the entire series. It was so good. It was so good creating videos for SOM and I learned a lot. I humbly ask for you, those who are watching this video, to pray for School of Mission Sabah 2020. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel because you have so much more things coming for you, all right? So this is Bon Voyage for me, and I'll see you maybe one day. Bye!